This lecture is part of a series of lectures on the zermelo frankel axioms for set theory and will be about the axiom of foundation, sometimes called the axiom of regularity. So the axiom of foundation says that you can't have an infinite series of sets, each of which is um, sort of contained in the next one like this. So it says you can't have an infinite series going off like that. You, you can, of course, have an infinite series of sets with a naught in a1, a1 in a2, and so on. So this is perfectly OK. Foundation just rules out this. Um, it's actually a little bit tricky to state this in the language of set theory because the language of set theory can't directly talk about the existence of an infinite number of sets like this. Instead, what you can do is you can say if a is a non-empty set, then we can find some element a in a which is minimal for the um, membership relation. So in particular, if we, if we take a to be the set a0, a1, a2, and so on, you see you can't have an infinite descending chain like that because then it wouldn't have a minimal element for the membership relation. In particular, the axiom of foundation rules out sets that are members of themselves, and it rules out things like pairs of sets such that a is in b and b is in a. Um, so in this case, you could take a to be the set big. You could take the set capital A to be the set consisting just of a, and here you would consider the set consisting of a and b. And in both cases, it would um, conflict with this. Um, so. What's the axiom of foundation good for? Um, well, the main application is uh, when we have the von Neumann hierarchy, V0, V1, V2, V omega, and so on, um, you can take V, the von Neumann universe, to be the union of all the V alpha. And um, the axiom of foundation more or less says that every set is in the von Neumann universe. Um, in order to see this, the axiom of foundation can be used to show that all sets have a rank. So the rank of a set A is the smallest ordinal greater than the ranks of all elements of A. And the axiom of foundation implies the rank is well defined, and the rank of A then turns out to be the smallest alpha such that um, A is in V alpha. Um, so uh, the axiom of foundation is very useful if you're studying models of set theory because then it tells you what the model looks like. It can be written as this um, union of an increasing sequence of, of, of um, stages. Um, however, if you're not studying models of set theory, the axiom of foundation is almost never used. Um, if you're doing ordinary mathematics like number theory or um, differential geometry, whatever, you, you will never encounter the axiom of foundation doing anything. Um, in fact, it's so useless in ordinary mathematics that Zermelo didn't even include it in his original axioms for set theory in 1908. Um, he added them to the, to the axioms he introduced in 1930, but um, that, that was a couple of decades later. So um, what happens if you omit the axiom of foundation. Um, well, um, first of all, you can get non-well-founded sets. For example, you can, you, can, you can just say there's going to be an element A such that A is a member of itself, and you can sort of take this as, a, as an atom. Well, it's not quite an atom because, but it's, because it's got members, but you can sort of treat in some ways like an atom, and then you can build up a von Neumann hierarchy by starting with the this set A instead of with the empty set, and that gives you a, a, a model um, not satisfying the axiom of foundation. This actually gives a philosophical problem. So if you've got a set B, such that B is the only member of B, and, and set A, such that A is the only member of A, let, let's draw pictures of them. Well, well, here's the set A, and we're going to draw it as a tree, so it contains itself contains just one element. So, so the set A, when pictured as, a, as a, a rooted tree, looks like this, and the set B looks exactly the same. 
now we have the problem is a equal to b um and uh, same as rooted trees and for ordinary well-founded sets you can tell where they're same just by looking at their rooted trees for instance if i've got a set like this um and a set that looks like this so here we have two rooted trees and i want to tell where they're the same well i can sort of start at the bottom and work up so i know this set must be equal to this set because they've both got no elements and then I work up and I find this set is equal to this set because they've both got the same elements because the orange ones are the same. And similarly, this set is equal to this set because they've got no elements. And then, you know, this set is going to be equal to this set because you, you, they've got the same elements. So if a set is well founded, you can start at the bottom and work upwards to find out whether it's equal to another set. But if a set is not well founded, that, that, that you... You, you can't sort of start at the bottom. I mean, you can say A is equal to B if this element is equal to that element. Well, that leads you back to the same question of whether A equals B again. So for non well founded sets, the relation between sets and trees is uh, doesn't really work so well because you can have identical well founded tree, sorry, identical trees, not well founded, that correspond to different sets. Um, so uh, um, that doesn't make it quite clear that you can find models of um, set theory that aren't well founded because it's, uh, as I said, it's a, it's a little bit unclear how you define the von Neumann hierarchy if you start with a non-well founded set. So um, let's have a slightly clearer way to see that you can find non-well founded models. What we do is... Um, 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 what we do is, is we take the language of set theory and we add new constants to it, C0, C1, C2, and so on. And then we're going to add axioms saying that C1 is in C0, C2 is in C1, C3 is in C2, and so on. So we're going to take these axioms plus the axioms of zermelo frankel set theory. And we notice that if the axioms of zermelo frankel set theory are consistent, then so, are the, so, so is zermelo frankel set theory with these added axioms. Because any proof leading to a contradiction can only use a finite number of these axioms, and zermelo frankel set theory plus a finite number of these axioms is obviously consistent, if zermelo frankel set theory is. So, um, so th these axioms are consistent, assuming... Zermelo Frankel set theory is consistent, which means by Gödel's completeness theorem um, that there is a model of this. In other words, it means we can find a set together with constants with these conditions and satisfying the usual axioms of Zermelo Frankel set theory. Well, this model is obviously not well founded. because it's got a chain of elements, C0, C1, C2, and so on, satisfying these conditions. Well, uh, we seem to have got a contradiction because it also satisfies axiom of foundation. So we appear to have found a contradiction in the universe. Um, we said the axiom of foundation implies that a set is well found, founded, and here we've got a model of zermelo frankel set theory that's not well founded, but still satisfies the axiom of foundation. So what is going wrong? Well, it turns out that um, the uh, concept of being well foundedness is a little bit fishy and you can't really define it precisely in first order logic. Um, um, the, the problem is that, that, that well founded can mean two different things. It can mean internal well-foundedness, or it can mean external well-foundedness. So let's illustrate the difference. Suppose you've got a model of set theory, and I'm just going to write it as a collection of things. And inside this model, we've got things like the empty set and the integer, the, 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 the omega, and all the other sets you're used to. And it's also got these funny constants C0, C1, C2, and so on. And now it's not well founded because if we take the set C0, C1, C2 and so on, this doesn't satisfy the axiom of foundation. It contains no minimal element under the inclusion relation. So let's call this set um, 
um, C. And the point is that set C is not in the model M. Um, so this is how we can get away with a set not being well founded, even though it satisfies the axiom of foundation. It satisfies the axiom of foundation from the point of view of somebody living inside the set M. Um, someone outside the set M can see it's not well founded by considering the set C. Um, however, the person living inside M can't actually see the set C and can't define it and doesn't realise that it actually shows that M is not well founded. So all the sets that the person living inside M can see do actually satisfy the axiom of foundation, that they, they, they have it, uh, minimal elements under inclusion. Um, so things can get even weirder than this. So let's take zermelo frankel set theory with choice and add the following axiom. Let's add the axiom ZFC is inconsistent. Now, oddly enough, this is actually a consistent theory, even though the theory seems to claim that it's inconsistent. The reason follows from Gödel's incompleteness theorem, which is quite different from Gödel's completeness theorem that we used in the earlier um, page. So the incompleteness theorem says that if ZFC is consistent, then you can't prove it's consistent, which means if you add the axiom saying it's inconsistent, then you can't derive an inconsistency. So this theory is actually somewhat bizarrely consistent. Well, therefore it has a model by Gödel's completeness theorem this time. And what does it mean to say that ZFC is inconsistent? Well, let's say it means there's an integer encoding a proof of inconsistency. In other words, it encodes a contradiction in, um, in ZFC. Well, that's a bit of a problem because if you've got an integer encoding a proof of inconsistency, then we could just you know, write out this proof of inconsistency based on the integer and we would obtain a contradiction. So what's going on? Well, it turns out this integer is not really an integer at all. It's non-standard. So what happens is we have the usual integers, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Um, and we might have the usual integers, whatever those are in some model of set theory, but we might have extra infinite integers with positive integers with the property that you can find infinite chains going up and also infinite chains going down. Um, and these integers tend to give you sets that are not well founded. For example, if, if you encode integers in the positive integers in the usual way as naught is the empty set, one is zero, two is zero and one and so on, then um, these non-standard integers turn out to be encoded by non-well founded sets, which are kind of rather freaky as you see from having theor consistent theories that assert their own inconsistency. Really bizarre. Um, the, 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 the problem, the, this problem is related to the fact that well-foundedness cannot be defined by first order statements. That's statements in the usual language of set theory. Um, so the axiom of foundation is a first order axiom. So it's not really quite saying that the set is well founded. It's sort of doing the best approximation it can to well foundedness in the, um, in, in, in the um, language of set theory. And, and the reason for this is pretty much the same as the example um, I gave earlier, that um, um, if, if we look at this, say a model M and suppose um, we've got these set of integers 0, 1, 2 and so on. And suppose we've also got these strange non-well-founded integers. Um, now, um, someone living outside this can see that this set is not well-founded because they can look at the set n, n minus 1, n minus 2 and so on. 
and see that this set has an infinite decreasing set of integers, which an infinite set of positive integers, which of course doesn't make sense. Um, however, uh, this set is not in the model M, so someone living in M can't see it. Well, now you say, um, wait a moment, this infinite set here is a subset of omega in M, which is the set of all positive integers that M knows about it. And didn't we have an axiom in zermelo frenkel set theory saying that any subset of a set is a set? So surely this set here is a subset of omega and therefore ought to be in M. Well, not quite, because um, turns out the axiom of separation doesn't quite say that every subset of a set is a set, although I sort of stated that informally in the first lecture. What it says is that every definable subset of a set is a set, and it turns out that this set here is not definable in the language of set theory, so it doesn't actually exist in M. Um, and um, if we could define well-foundedness in first-order logic, then we would actually be able to define sets like this. Um, so being well-founded is a very slippery property. You have to remember that you can't actually quite define it in first-order logic, and all statements about well-foundedness should be, should be um, treated with great caution. Um, what are they what are well non-well-founded sets good for, apart from finding bizarre counterexamples? It turns out that it's actually a use for them in non-standard analysis. So um, um, analysis, when done in Newton's time and Leibniz's time, quite often used to use infinitesimal elements. So you define the derivative of a function to be f of um, x plus an infinitesimal number dx minus f of x divided by dx, where dx is greater than zero, but dx is less than one over n for all integers n. And uh, this upset people a lot because there's no such real number, so there seems to be something fishy going on. And Robinson um, came up with this really wonderful idea. You could sort of make sense of this by using two models of set theory, one a sort of standard usual model of set theory, and the second would be a sort of non-standard model of set theory containing infinitesimal elements um, in the form of um, 1 over n for n a non-standard, non-well-founded integer. Um, and going between the standard integers and the non-standard integers is a little bit tricky and confusing, but Robinson worked out how to do this and how to make sense of non-standard analysis. Um, this idea hasn't really taken off very much. I mean, there, there are a few people who use it, but um, most analysts just don't bother. I mean, it, it gives an interesting new way of thinking about um, um, calculus, but um, there are two problems with it. First of all, it doesn't actually prove anything that you can't already prove without using it. That, that's actually, a, there's actually a sort of conservation theorem saying that any, any standard, any result in standard analysis you can prove using non-standard analysis can also be proved without using non-standard analysis. The second problem is that using non-standard analysis involves messing around with non-well-founded sets. And as we saw in the earlier examples, non-well-founded sets behave in a really bizarre manner and um, that they have all these apparently contradictory properties and if you slightly misuse them you run into a contradiction. So most mathematicians just prefer to stay clear of them. Um, so um, the axiom of foundation together with the axiom of extensionality sort of more or less describes what a set is. So a set turns out to be more or less the same as a well-founded um, rooted um, rigid tree. So here what we're doing is we're, we're taking a root of a tree and um, the, the, the initial branches all go to the various other um, nodes representing other sets. So the tree ends up looking something like this. 
um, where at each node um, that, that, that corresponds to a set and the sets in that node correspond to the, the things just below the node. So um, what rigid means, as we saw in the previous um, um, lecture, corresponds to extensionality. It just says that it's it's got no automorphisms, kind of corresponds to the fact that each of these nodes corresponds to a different tree, so you can't switch them. Um, being well founded corresponds to the fact that all branches are finite in length. So we're not allowed to have an infinite chain going down like that, because that would correspond to an infinite chain of sets, each contained um, in, in the next one. Um, um, the, 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 fr from the tree, you can, you can work out its rank as follows. You, you might think if all branches are finite, this surely means that the rank of any set is, is either finite or at most omega. But in fact, you can get sets of rank greater than omega by, by doing something like this. First of all, let's find a s set of rank. Um, well, here it would have rank one and here to rank two, and then you can make it of rank three. And then you can make it of rank four and so on. So you can kind of go on like this and find a set of rank omega. But then you can find uh, make a new set containing this one. This is going to have rank omega plus one. So you see, even though all branches coming out from this have finite length, it can still have rank greater than omega. Um, um, finally, I should just mention the Mostowski Collapse theorem. So the Mostowski collapse theorem roughly says that if you've got a, a well-founded rooted tree, then you can get a set out of it. And you get the set out of it by sort of starting at the bottom and working upwards. So, so this node corresponds to the empty set because there's nothing below it. And this node is going to correspond to the set containing the empty set because that's the only thing it's joined to. And you can work your way up the tree by starting at the bottom and assign a set to each node. And you can start at the bottom because it's well founded and it gives you a well defined set because the tree is rigid. So you, you don't get two copies of anything. Um, conversely, if you've got a well-founded um, set, then you can get a tree out of it just by reversing this process. So the Mastowski collapse theorem just set, is essentially a way of saying that sets correspond to well-founded um, rooted trees. I guess the Mastowski collapse theorem says you can go back in this direction. Um, OK, so uh, the axioms of extensionality and foundation together in some sense say what a set is. It roughly says it's this special sort of tree, although obviously you can't really define a tree without knowing what a set is, so that's sort of circular, but never mind. Um, all of the remaining axioms of zermelo frankel set theory um, force the existence of certain sorts of sets. So the next lecture, we're going to start with the simplest of these, which are the axioms of pairing and the axiom of union.